So in this example, what we're going to do is take a look at how to make a series of holes or a pattern on this plate. And we're going to make it so that if our plate ever changes sizes, our pattern is going to update accordingly. So in order to accomplish this, what we're going to do is create a linear pattern. And we want to pattern this hole right here. So to do this, we're going to use a linear pattern. Under linear pattern, we have two options. We have spacing and instances, or up to reference. Up to reference is great if you anticipate that your plate is ever going to change size because your pattern is going to update accordingly to the specifications you put in. So what we want to do is I like to come in and select my feature right off the bat so that I can see a preview of what it's going to look like. So I'll select in my graphics area that hole. And then let's start at the beginning up underneath direction one. So for direction one, we want to choose something linear for the direction of our pattern. In this case, it's going to be this linear edge here. Then up to reference, what it wants us to do is specify what reference we want to go up to. So in that case, I want it to go up to this specific edge. So if our plate gets bigger, it's still referencing the same edge. So I'll select this edge here. Then down below, we can either have a dimension from the centeroid of our shape or a specific reference on our specific feature. And then I can tell it if I want to do a certain number of instances or how far apart I need them to be spaced out. Also up here, underneath the green box, is what we have here is called like a buffer. Basically meaning that I tell it I need at least a certain number of space before it continues to create another one. We'll take a look at that in a second as well. However, I want this pattern to extend in both directions going this way as well. Therefore, we'll use direction two. So I'll click in my direction two box and I'll specify which direction I want it to go. We'll use this linear edge. Then I can tell it to go up to a specific reference, just like we did with direction one. We'll use this far back edge as my second reference. So now you can see what our pattern looks like here. So let's go ahead and click OK and take a look at our pattern. So like I mentioned, this is great, but what if our plate changes size? Another useful tool is something called Instant 3D. It's on your feature tab up, the, up at the top. What this allows us to do, if I double click on the base extrusion, it brings up the dimensions associated with that feature. Notice now where my dimensions are shown, I also have these blue orbs at the very end. By having Instant 3D turned on, I can literally just click on this blue orb and start dragging. So as you can see, as I move this over and increase that dimension, my pattern is automatically updating. However, at a certain point, you'll see that if we keep adding it, let's say we stop right here. Well, if I look down, you can see that we have very minimal material between our last hole and the edge of our part. This would cause problems during manufacturing and would not be ideal. So let's go back into our linear pattern. If I take a look at this, that's what this option that I briefly mentioned before does. It's basically like a buffer. So it's saying that unless I have this amount of room to that selected reference, it's not going to add another instance. So if I tell it that I need at least 0.2 worth of space, it's not going to add another hole. We can do the same thing down at the bottom. Unless there's 0.2 worth of space, do not add another hole. So if I click OK and we come back and modify our size of our plate again, again by pulling on this blue orb because Instant 3D is turned on, you can see that unless it has that 0.2 worth of space, it's not adding another hole. Same thing goes in this direction as well. But you can see how now our pattern is automatically updated even though we're changing the size of our plate. 